action. Who's going to win the race? The disc or the hoop? They're the exact same radius. They're the exact same mass. And I'm going to roll them down an incline of a certain angle. Who will win the race? Well, before we do this exciting race, let's do some calculations so we can make a prediction. So here's our situation, an object rolling down an incline. And the first thing to do always is to draw all the forces acting on that object. Well, it has mass, therefore the force of gravity is acting on it. And that points straight down towards the center of Earth. And the force of gravity is simply the mass times the acceleration of gravity, mg. Well, it's rolling, therefore there has to be friction. If there was no friction, it would simply slide down the incline. Friction is always parallel to the two surfaces and in the opposite direction of motion. And finally, there's contact between the rolling object and the inclined plane. Therefore, there's a normal force. And the normal force always points perpendicular to the surface. Excellent. So those are the three forces acting on either the hoop or the disc. And I will also choose a coordinate system and I'm going to rotate it such that the x-axis points down the incline and the y-axis is perpendicular to the incline. Force of gravity I'll then break into its components. There's two components, one in the x, one in the y. And if this is theta, this must be 90 minus theta because this makes a perpendicular. And since this is perpendicular, therefore this angle also has to be theta. Thus, I know this component is mg cos theta. This component is mg sine theta. Great. So we've nailed down the forces. Now, let's talk torque. It's rolling, so there has to be torque on it. Well, torque is equal to r cross f where r is the distance from the pivot point to the application of the force. Thus, the torque of friction, for example, well, for friction, the application of the force is here. This distance here is the radius of the hoop r. So I know that that's r cross f. And they're perpendicular. The force is this way. r is that way. It's perpendicular. So the torque of friction is just Rf. Now for the normal force, the normal force points like this. And the distance from the application of the force to the pivot also points like this. So they're parallel. Cross product of two parallel vectors is zero. So there is no torque from the normal force. Great. So let's use Newton's second law for rotation. Sum of the torques equals I alpha. And we only have one torque, the torque of friction. So that's RF equals I alpha. Now, the objects are rolling without slipping. When something is rolling without slipping, then this is true. So I will plug in for the angular acceleration. And I get I acceleration over R. Great. Let's stop here for now because we need to figure out what the frictional force is. And we can use Newton's second law to do that. So sum of the forces equals MA. And let's talk in the x direction. So along the x axis, well, what do we have? We've got mg sine theta going down the incline. And we have the force of friction in the other direction. And all that equals MA. Ah, now we can isolate for the force of friction. Plug that baby in here. So the force of friction, so if I bring this guy over there, and then the MA over here, I get MG sine theta minus MA. Excellent. Let's plug in for friction. And so then I would get R times the force of friction, which is mg 
sine theta minus ma, and all that equals the moment of inertia times acceleration over r. So let's multiply through by r. That would just do this. And now I'll bring the r times ma over this side so I can isolate for acceleration. So m r g sine theta equals a plus. Great, I'll factor out the a. And now I'll divide both sides by this term here. And I get my expression for acceleration to be m r g sine theta all divided by the moment of inertia divided by r plus m r. Excellent. Finally, well, what is the moment of inertia? Moment of inertia is always proportional to m r squared. So for moment of inertia, it will always equal some coefficient times m r squared. So let's plug that in for i here. And we see that then the acceleration is equal to m r theta all divided by c naught and then watch what happens this r cancels with one of them here and now I have an mr everywhere so if I divide both the numerator and the denominator by m times r so let's just do that all I'm doing is multiplying by 1 but you see what happens. What happens is this guy cancels here. I can factor out the MR here, and I get this. And then I get my final expression. The acceleration is G sine theta, all divided by this coefficient for the moment of inertia, plus 1. Excellent. So does the answer make sense? Well. The larger the acceleration of gravity, the larger the acceleration down the incline. That makes sense. So on Jupiter, they're going to roll down faster than on Earth. What else? The larger the angle, the larger sine theta will be, and therefore the larger the acceleration. That also makes sense. And finally, the larger the moment of inertia given by this coefficient c naught, so therefore the larger c naught is, the smaller the acceleration. That makes sense too. If you have more moment of inertia, you resist being accelerated angularly more, and therefore you won't be going as fast after a given amount of time. So, with our prediction then, well, we know that for the hoop, the moment of inertia equals m r squared, and therefore c naught equals 1. For the disk, the moment of inertia is 1 half, m r squared telling us c naught is equal to 1 half. So, for a smaller c naught, we're going to get a smaller denominator and therefore a larger fraction. So, I predict the disk 